Hello everyone. So I wanted to talk about an example that I've actually talked about before. But the reason that I want to talk about this is to explain a little bit about the difference between what you generally see in lectures and what is actually expected of you. Because the writing of mathematics can be done in many different ways. So sometimes when you're, what you'll see in lectures in general isn't actually the sort of formal way of writing mathematics that you will see in a textbook. Um, or in a mathematics paper, because what you have there is a combination of the person talking, your lecturer talking, and what they're writing on the board. So there, the information is contained in two mediums, and you put them together and you get the whole thing. So there you have the speaking and the writing. Of course, in a book, in a textbook, or what is expected of you in an exam, actually there, because you're not explaining yourself orally with the, the example, you have to write everything down in a much more formal way. So that's what I'm trying to do with the tutorial solutions that I'm putting out. I'm writing down everything in a more formal way with more explanation as to what's happening in each step. Okay? So I spoke a little bit about um, this particular proof, proof that for, that for n is an integer greater than or equal to 1, that this statement holds true. Okay? I explained this in one of the previous videos, but in doing so, I was, there was a lot of talking going on. So had I just written down the, the whole thing in the kind of mess that was on the board, that wouldn't be enough to, to answer the question. It wouldn't be clear enough to see exactly what was happening. So I wanted to go back through this example and actually go step by step through exactly what you would need to write to prove this. Okay. And the steps are the same as in all inductive uh, proofs. So what do we do? The first thing that we do is we, we prove the base case. So we say base case, and in this case, the lowest number here, so it's all integers greater than or equal to 1, and the base case is then n equals 1. Okay? It's really important to check exactly what the base case is. Sometimes it's going to be 0, sometimes it's going to be 1, sometimes it might be 9 or 10. Okay? It can be any integer. Okay? So now we check for this case, and we see that in fact this expression on the left hand side is just 1. So it says add up the integers from 1 to n, but if we've just got n, uh, n equals 1, then the answer is 1. Then we check the, left, the right hand side, and what do we have? We have 1, 1 plus 1, we have 2, equals 1, and we tick. Okay? Therefore, the base case holds true. Okay? What's the next thing? The next thing is always to write the inductive hypothesis. So we say the inductive hypothesis. is that the statement holds true for some k. Okay? Statement holds true for some k integers k greater than equal to 1. Okay? We haven't said a specific k, and we haven't said for all k, that's very important. We've said for some k. Okay? And then we write it down. So that says that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 up to k equals k, k plus 1, k over 2. Okay. What do we do now? Now we ask about the inductive step. Now we're going to ask, what about for k plus 1? So we then say, for k plus 1, and we only write down one of the sides of this. We don't write the whole thing down for both sides because we're trying to prove that it's true for k plus 1. Okay? So we just write down the left-hand side. So for k plus 1, we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 up to k and then up to k plus 1. Okay? That's the left-hand side here. Okay? Now comes the inductive step. Now we use this and we say that from 1 to k is the same as this, and we've assumed that this is true, okay? So we can write that this is k, k plus 1, divided by 2, equals, oh, sorry, plus k plus 1. Okay? What we've done there, we've just taken this, this part here, which we said is k, k plus 1 over 2, and we've added on k plus 1 onto it. Okay, I'm going to write this off and I'm going to carry on. Okay. So for k plus 1, I'm going to write it down again. For k plus 1, we therefore have that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 k plus k plus 1 equals this thing here. Okay? But let's factorize that. Let's take out the factor of k plus 1 equals k plus 1 times 
k over 2 plus 1. Okay. Which is k plus 1, k plus 2 over 2. Okay. Just take up the 2 up there, divide 3 by 2, we get that. Okay. But that is precisely the statement that you would get for k plus 1. Okay. Therefore, if statement is true, statement is true for k, that implies it's true for k plus 1. Okay. That's enough. So we have now proved by the base case, proving the base case, and proving that using the inductive hypothesis with the inductive step, that it does hold true for k plus 1, we've done it. That's all you need to do. Okay? However, it's really important to include all of these steps in this order. Okay? So we can now say, uh, we can rub that off. We can now say, therefore, as the base case, true, and the inductive step is proved, the statement is true for all n greater than or equal to zero, and one, sorry, and in the Okay. So what I've written down here would be enough to explain to somebody without having to tell them vocally what's going on. Okay. Obviously not in this order now because I've had to rub things out on the board, but you have to follow exactly these steps to make a proof like this. Okay. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this, if anything is unclear, um, and I will see you all soon. Okay, great. Bye for now.